Hey everybody, Jake here. Um, about a week ago, the battery tender on my Honda Trail uh, blew its fuse and I realized that this is probably the first video I should have ever made, but I wanna show you how I routed my battery tender. So you can see here, this is the inside of the case, right? It's the center of the Honda Trail. And if you look really carefully, you'll see that this cover right here is the cover for the battery. And if you can tell, this is my fuse box for the battery tender. But if you can tell, the wires lead into the same point. Basically, I was using an actual battery tender cable, and I didn't want to route it out the back behind this cover that most people do. Not that it's a bad routing. It actually works really well if you're going to drill a hole into your box on the back and charge your electronics off of there. But I actually opted to do something different. I actually made this hole bigger. I took a knife and made it a bit wider over here in this edge. I don't know if I can get in there and really show you. But I did that so the wire has more room to run in and connect to both the positive and negative terminal through one side. And then I actually routed it this way underneath this cover and it actually comes out right here. And I did this for a couple different reasons. Rather than wire my USB outlet into the headlight, since we didn't have a port in the United States to just plug in, I didn't feel like doing the uh, tap-in method, um, I wired my USB outlet directly to the battery. There's definitely a lot of different ideology about doing that. The reason that I chose to wire my USB directly to the battery is because my USB outlet actually has an on-off switch. Now it's not plugged in right now, and also my outlet died. Just wanted to show this to you as well while I'm at it. But more or less, I opted to run it straight to the battery because I'm not using it all of the time, number one. And number two, I can turn it on and off. So that made the most sense for me, especially not wanting to open the headlight bucket and tap into a wire. The other thing is that this allows me to unplug, basically I took an SAE cable and ran it the opposite way so that the negative is the positive and then the positive is the negative uh, so that I could merge the two here like I would plug in the battery tender itself. So this lets me unplug and plug in my battery tender or it lets me plug it in when I'm out for an adventure and charge off of the battery. I know there's definitely some of you that are going to comment and say that's not the right way to do it. In my opinion, there's not a right way to do it. The reason I don't think that there's a right way in this application is because even if I killed the battery on my trail, we still have a kickstart. The kickstart will work when the battery is dead. So I haven't been that concerned about it overall, but that's the way that I've chosen to do this. And I think that I'm going to continue to use it this way, at least for now. Maybe in the future, I'll dive into the headlight bucket and tap into one of the wires, but I haven't had the need to do that. And why did I choose it up here instead of back here? Well, I was never going to put anything in this box to charge inside of the box. Um, more or less, I wanted the USB outlet up here and anything that I have that's gonna to need to be charged, like my GPS, is going to have to be up here, or my phone, which will be mounted on the bars this year to use as a backup mapping software. So that's the route that I've gone. I do need to replace this as well. I've already replaced the fuse for the battery tender, and like I said, one of the nice things is that it is right up top here. So all I had to do was pop this cover off, replace the fuse, it's just a 7.5 amp fuse, and after I did that, it was fine. Charges again. Uh, I think what I need to do is add an inline fuse to the USB side. That'd probably be the best way to make sure I don't burn that outlet again. But the outlets are like $10 off of Amazon, so I'm not particularly worried. But let me show you the new outlet. This is our new USB outlet. You can see it's exactly the same. It has these... Uh, flat edges on it so it'll slide in a little bit easier um, but this is identical and this USB outlet on Amazon is ten dollars you can see it's got a touch on off button it's quick charging USB 3.0 two USB outlets 
the positive and negative on the back. And that's it. It pops into place. It'll plug right into the existing wiring. It's exactly the same. I'm not going to put a fuse in this time. I'm going to do that later at a different date. I'm going to have to go buy some, uh, some wiring stuff, some electrical stuff. But uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. Let me show you how it pops right in. Now I have the old USB outlet out. <clears throat> you can see the two wires here. I have them uh, heat shrinked with waterproof heat shrink. Uh, I did mark which one the positive is. Uh, just anticipating that in the future I'd have to replace that USB outlet because they are pretty cheap. And like I said, they're $10 on Amazon. Um, but basically I'm just gonna take the new one and we're gonna plug it right in. And I mean, that's really gonna be the bulk of this, this whole thing. So. Just hang in there for a second while I pop this new one on. I'm basically going to be able to reuse this threaded lock ring from the old one that's actually sitting on the wires down below here. So I'm just going to slide it into place and then I'll be able to lock it down after I get the wires connected. So there you have it, everybody. The new outlet is installed. Um, <clears throat> all we have to do now is test it. I already connected the line directly to the battery. So let's flip this open. And let's take a look and see if this will turn on. Right now it's off because it's not illuminated, but let's press that power button. And it works. We have power to it, which is awesome. You can see that we can turn the power on and off with just the little touch button. It works whether the bike is on or off. The bike was off, now it's on. And it works. It's exactly what we wanted. Overall, I'm satisfied. Like I said, I will add that inline fuse just to make sure that on long trips, this will continue to operate even if a fuse dies, you could just replace it. And yeah. You guys could see how my setup kind of differs from some other people with CT125. Uh, you do what's best for you. In, in my scenario, this is working great for me, and I haven't had any issues until now. And like I said, the outlet's $10. You could check out the link below in the bio, and uh, you could order one for yourself if you'd like. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. I'd love to hear what you guys think or what you're doing differently. And until next time, I will talk to you later. See you, everybody.